All right, here we are back at Cameron Caravan. It's going to give you a rollout awning demonstration on your new Franklin Caravan. So nice and simple. Travel lock release, rafter lock released. For the sake of the video, I've cheated and already done it on the front. We want to release the awning. Now, if you're a bit short one end, it does actually come with a nice handy little tool that will allow you to flick the cam at the top. But I'm going to use it just for the demo sake. Grab hold of your strap, pull it out till you say can reach it. You can pop your your handy little crab hook away, roll out the awning till we see the scallop so you know we're all the way out. Now on the back, I'm going to slide the inner arm up, it has a nice little latch, you'll hear it go click at the top. I'm going to grab the handle, I'm simply lifting it at any stage I can stop. I'm going to go to a halfway point, I'm going to go to the front now, of course if you had two people you could be doing this together. But for the sake of the demo, we'll do it as one. This time, I'm roughly setting the height that I'm happy with there. I'll come to the, uh, the rear now, and we'll simply level that up. And then, you simply push out tight and lock it off. And it's as simple as that, and of course you'd repeat that process at the front. The other option you can do is get a nice little guide rope around here as well, and also help peg it to the ground. In windy weather, it'll just help you uh, secure the awning, but we're going to show you another great windy weather setting in a minute. The other thing that can happen with rollout awnings, and they'll come with the deflappers as well, great accessory, just takes, see that edge fluttering there? And that's what it'll do in the wind. So we simply want to open the clamp, pop that nice soft clamp roughly in about the middle of the awning, tighten it up, simple little Velcro strap, around and pull tight. All of a sudden, that tightness now just takes that flutter that you get out of the awning. So, great little accessory. Rightio, we'll show you now the reverse process. So, we're gonna pull the Velcro, separate it, simply loosen off the clamp, and remove the anti-flap kit. So, nice and simple. Another setting I wanna show you over here is the carport settings. This is what we call standard. This is as quick and as easy it is to roll out the awning, and we wanna detach it from the van. So, to do that, I actually want to lower the arm down first, release the clip, stand the leg upright, and it doesn't matter if we haven't got the height right at this stage. See, I'm holding the pressure to hold the awning out, and I tie it off. So I'm a whisk of high, I'm not far off. A couple of holes down, and there we go. We've got a carport. So now, all of a sudden, as you can see, we can walk through the awning, we can peg that down, and if you put your guide rope out again, you get a nice sturdy awning to the ground. So fantastic. This is basically set up ready to go. So you can see the great shade we've got. It's so quick and easy. But now I want to show you a windy weather setting. So for this one, we want to lessen the awning. We want to strengthen it up because we're fully extended here at the moment. So I'm going to loose the raft, loosen the raft off because we want it to slide in. I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to guess there. We could count how many holes if we want to make sure we're parallel. I'm going to go to the back of the awning, so see how we can walk it down. One's down, one's up. I'm going to grab that arm. I'm going to come back. Of course, I want to just loosen off my rafter knob, line it up with the latch, click. We're in safe. Now, I'm simply going to, this is sort of reverse of what I'm going to show you in a sec about packing it. I always make sure I've got one hand on the strap. I always like the strap somewhere in the middle, and I'm letting the awning roll up, but it's going to stop it a minute. Just have a look here. See, it's going to hit the end. Now we know it stopped. All of a sudden, let's come out here and have a look back at the awning. We've got a third of the awning rolled away. Instead of those arms being fully telescopic up, instead of those being out, we've made it a third. I've used this setting a lot at shows. You can imagine if you've got 20 vans on display, you just tuck that strap out of the way. This setting here will just handle that little bit more wind still allow you to put your shoes at the door, still allow you to put your chairs and everything under here as well. So it's a great little setting, easy one to remember. But let me show you some of the do's and don'ts. So let's go looking for our strap again, and I'll show you some of the errors you can make. If I try and pull the awning out, it won't go. So I know I'm either a step ahead or a step behind. We know that we've got to release the latch. So I'll push, I'll come back now, I'll grab the strap, all of a sudden it works. I know I need to slide these arms away, but if I try and have a go now, I can see it won't work. 
So again, I'm a step ahead or a step behind. So I need to roll it out more. We want to increase that angle. I always just like to put it down to the stopper first. By lowering it all the way down, it just helps this angle for this arm to slide. We go slide, and you can see, all of a sudden that's going to go back to the van. Another don't, some people get a bit eager to tighten these up. They still need to shorten up, so let's not tighten those at this stage. I'm going to repeat the process on the front, down to the stopper. I did it the other way around, so you can see it works both ways, but I do like to do that one first. Now we're ready to roll up the awning. So if I come all the way back here, I've got one hand on the strap. I'm going to release that little paw. I like to slide the strap to the middle, just so it rolls up evenly. So as I come out, I always make sure I've got a good hold of the strap because you'll see, if I don't, it could go back very quickly to the van. Rest in its cradle. To finish off to go down the road, I simply need to go click. Tighten up that rafter knob, repeat the process at the top. So it's a simple little squeeze the arm together, latch. Now we tighten those rafter knobs so we don't lose them down the road. I'm going to repeat that same process just so you understand that we're nice and secure. Down and just tightening them up. Now that awning's ready to go down the road. We know it's nice and secure. You're ready to go. So you can see how quick and easy they are. And when you get confident with them, they're just a great little accessory. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Lots more to come. All right, welcome back to Cameron Cabins. This one's more, we've now arrived on site. We want to get things going. So we come to the front of the van. We can see the gas taps pointing to this bottle. So we want to turn this bottle on. This gives us a full bottle ready to go and gives us the option if we run out of gas, we can swap over later. While we're here on the front of the van, we can see we've got a nice tap on the front, so that will run off your water pump or your mains pressure, and we'll get into that one a bit later. But while we're here, the operating of the front protector shade. Squeeze the clips on both sides of the awning. You can see it just released it. It now allows me to lift it up, pick a height, nice awning height, open. Now, that will allow us to see out that front window of the van if you've got a nice outlook, and it'll also give us the airflow we want. You don't have to put this up, but it's just nice and simple. So that's basically the front of the van. Come around the side next. Rightio, so here we are on the off side of the van. I just want to show you a few other things. Hot water system vent, so you'll feel the heat coming out of that when we go inside and show you that. And 240. We've got a 240 power cord here, ready to go. This is our 15 amp one ready for the park. So you can see it's got the bigger earth pin, it's got the new insulated leads, and this is all designed now with the new regulations. So your 15 amp lead goes straight on into there, shuts down. Now what I'll show you while we're right here, a safety switch. If you overload or you have too many things running in the van, you'll find that'll trip off and you go, why haven't I got power? Come out here, just check that it is still turned on. Also check the pole at the caravan park because you might have tripped that as well. So we've now got our 240 in ready to go. As we go down the side of the van, we've got our lockable water filler. We can top up fresh water if we know we're going bush. But for this scenario, let's say we've rocked up at a caravan park and we're setting up but we're not quite level. So these simple little accessories here, the chocks, or the, sorry, the wheel ramps. Now, as you can see, a full size ramp, I can't get between the tandem axle. But if I separate this model one, slide that between the two, grab my full length one, slide it behind the wheel. Now, as we back up on here, you can see we've got one height, two height, and if we need the third, as we back it up, we'll be able to slide that back in. And that'll just allow you to tilt the van and help level up the van. So great little accessory because you can't guarantee you're gonna be level every time you stop. As we come down, we've now got our mains pressure hose. And what I like about this kit, we've got our end that goes on the van, but let's say we're at the caravan park. We've got our attachment for the tap. And with this one, we've got the old inch and three quarter, because you can't guarantee, depending on how old the park is, may still have some old inch fittings. Simply connect up to the tap, connect up to the van. Simple as that, turn the tap on, you've now got mains pressure, and it's a food grade quality hose, so you won't taste the, the garden hose. On our waste hose, very, very similar. So if we have a look at this, we've put ends on both ends. So when you're not using the hose, if you don't want the water dribbling in the car, or in the, uh, in the boot, depending on where you're storing your hose, you can put your two ends together and it will simply lock them together. But we want to drop that into the sump 
at the caravan park. This one, we simply connect up to the van and now all our grey water, so our grey water being our shower, our washing, our washing machine, our sink, is all going to flow away to the caravan park. So nice and simple. So what we might do, we'll go around the back of the van next and show you our drop down jack legs. So we've got our drop down jack legs. I'm going to pull the handle. Down she comes vertical, locks into place. We simply put our handle in, drop it straight in. And now, see that pressure? I'm just winding it straight down, simple crank. And do these up firm. You can see I can lift the van slightly. Don't over lift them because you can do the little drive gears inside. But if they're up nice and firm, all of a sudden you've taken that, um, that wobble of someone rolling over in the bed walking around at night. And then to pack up at the end of the day, we simply reverse, take the pressure off the leg. Once you can see it's clear of the ground like that, we can take the handle out, pull the handle, lift the leg, drop it back in, just give it a double check. The last thing we want is these to swing down while we're going down the road. So we can see that's gone click, it's gone done, all good. Yeah, we're back around the door side now and I just want to show you how simple it is to separate these two doors. Lift the handle to 90 degrees, pull apart, you can now shut that, I can clip that door back and you can see we've got full security mesh, lots of airflow and we can lock it and go out for the day and just keep that airflow. It's nice and simple. Back together, pull the handle, clip, she's shut, all back as one. So let's go inside the van now and have a look. Righty -o. so here we are inside the van and the first thing we do when we walk inside, we've got this isolator switch. All the lights could be turned off. But this master switch, if you stand back and have a look at all the lights in the van, I'm simply flicking that back black switch and you can see it's going to shut it down. So if something's not working, make sure that black switch is on first. And then as you can see, we've got the lights around the van. So the light switches will control the lights. Your reading lights have all got little switches on them. Nice and simple. So it'll just throw that extra light on the table as you need them. Or if you're reading a book, relaxing in the corner, it'll allow you to do it. It's got the same on the bed lights right through the van, but let's maybe start with tuning the TV because let's say we've arrived now at a, uh, a destination. Just check as you drive into town that the locals actually have an antenna. So if I wind that up, just have a look through the hatch there. You'll be able to see, hopefully, the antenna coming up. And then when it sits all the way up, I can feel it's there. And you can see by watching that antenna, I can even turn it from inside the van so we can tune it in. But let's turn the TV on first and let's make sure we're tuned in. So if we look at the remote here, just quickly in front of the TV, we want to make sure we're in TV mode, which I can see we are on the TV. If I hit menu, let's go across or down. So I'll try and hold the remote here so you can see what we're doing. Channel. So all I've done is come down from picture down the channel, across. Now, I can see I want to come down to auto search. Simply down to auto search, enter. Analog TV doesn't exist anymore. Let's not search all. Let's go straight to digital TV. Hit enter. Are you sure? Okay. And then we walk away and let that go because that's going to take about five minutes to go through. You can see we're up to 5%. Hasn't found any channels yet. So let's come back to that in a little while. Rightio, here we are, we're coming up to 80%. We had a bit of a stop there, so we weren't sitting here waiting too long. You can see though, we're already up to 54 digital channels found and 42 radios. It's coming up for that last percentage of the search. And basically, once that's done, you've tuned into the frequency in that area. So it doesn't look like we're gonna improve on that. So 54 channels, 42, once it's finished, that screen will go save successfully and disappear on us and we're basically now ready to go so it's as simple as channel up and channel down if we find our signals a bit pixelated there we go nice little christmas one on tv we can then reach up to the antenna and we can do that rotating and again if you've just driven into town look where all the locals are pointing their antenna and you can rotate that till you get your best picture and then let it go and you're simply away and then of course when you're not wanting the tv simply turn it off. I like to see if you're going down some rough roads though, 
all these plugs will unplug. You'll be able to loosen it off, lift the TV out and place it on the bed, up near the pillows where it's nice and safe. That'll just stop the TV swinging and vibrating on the arm. So nice little simple trick. If you know you're going to go on some vibration roads, you can simply remove the TV. Otherwise, pop your remote away safely, ready for next time. Right, from the TV, directly above, you saw me pull the master switch on near the door. Now this is telling me my battery's full. We're not on 240 power at the moment, so we're running on 12. You can see the picture of the sun. I've got 13.7 volts, so I've got a very full battery. I'm using, with all my lights on in the van at the moment, 3.3 but I'm actually inputting from my solar panel 3.5. So I'm pretty much uh, in that neutral territory so far as power draw. So it's just a nice quick snapshot. And what that's telling me, if I open up the cupboard down below and we have a look in here, it's basically my manager battery management system. It's pretty much set and forget. The display is telling me everything I need to know up there. So long as our power point's on, these fuses, all the negatives and positives are all fused. So if you ever see a light come on one of those, it's like a, a mercury sensor switch where it will tell you if one of those circuits is blowing and you might look around the van and go, oh, hang on, I just plugged in a fridge. Maybe my fridge is at fault. If you unplug the fridge, the light goes out you know your fridge is at fault so it's a very simple system one of those cupboards you don't really need to worry about that stays shut because it's all up here and this is everything we need to know so great little system so while we're here back at the tv i just want to show you the booster button see the little green light is on if i push that button green light goes out you'll see i've lost my signal it's just paused on the TV, service not available. It is an amplified antenna, so we do want to make sure that booster button's on, and there we are, my signal comes back straight away. So if you find you've got no TV signal, it could be one or two things. There is no signal in that town, or two, we've just simply left that booster off. But let's say we're ready to hit the road now, so we actually want to reverse the process. I actually want to wind down the antenna. If we look up here, we can see a down arrow, and it simply means if I wind down, let's look through the hatch again where we can, poke the camera up there, see it's coming down. Oops, there we go, first mistake. I didn't level, I didn't uh, come back here inside again. It's always good to make a mistake to show you what not what to do. Even the expert said it wrong. See that point should be looking at that point but it wasn't it was pointing this way and that's why you saw the uh, antenna wanting to drop on top of the hatch so make sure you line your dots up like that now if we wind down looking out through the hatch it'll be laying in its designated spot on the roof and you just keep winding and you'll feel when it hits the end it'll make a little noise on the roof but it ha there we are and you can feel the antennas down so that's now down safe ready for travel we're here back at Cameron Caravans. We're just showing you now what will happen. See, we've got that 15 amp lead we talked about, which is fine at all caravan parks. But the issue we're gonna have is when we visit houses and friends or at home, chilling everything before leaving, we need to be able to plug into our 10 amp plug. So that 15, as you see, will not plug into a 10 when you're at home. This great little safety switch uh, device from Amphibian allows us to plug the 15 amp lead in. You can see it's got a nice little safety switch, so if we do overload it, and then straight into the socket, and that will allow us now to use the van at home. So great little device, very handy if you are somewhere visiting where you haven't got a 15 amp lead. Okay, so we're here with the air conditioner now, and it's as simple as power on, and you'll notice the air won't make noise straight away. Give it a second, let it warm up. You can see I'm set on automatic, which is basically gonna heat or cool, to 20 degrees. Yes, I can go through modes and say I want you to cool, I want you to dry, I want your fan only, I want your heat, but if we simply leave it on A for auto and let it cycle through 21 degrees and that'll maintain the van at a nice comfortable 21 degrees, you can see it's also up on the display on the air conditioner and it's ready to go. So when we turn the air conditioner off as well, you'll notice I'll turn off but you'll hear the air conditioner running on. Don't panic, it's just winding itself down. So if you find when you hit the power button, it doesn't go off straight away, give it a few seconds and she'll go off. So nice and simple. Don't forget where you put the remote though. So we're back in the electronics cupboard and hidden above the electronic gauge is all our switches. Now we've just been running the air conditioner and if you find the air conditioner doesn't work, it's got an isolator switch here. Make sure it's turned on. You might still hear it in the background, but if I turn that off, 
you might hear now I've just killed the power to the air conditioner so if you find it's not working just come into the little cupboard make sure the button that says AC is actually turned on you can hear the air conditioner coming back but we're going to turn it off for now so we can finish the display we've got a water tank gauge so you can see our water tanks are full when I push the button and it'll only read when I touch the button it's got its own power source so nice and simple we want to turn the water pump on now I want to come down here to the sink and I simply want to run the water through. I'm running the hot water setting and I can see it's not spitting any air. I want to come across here to the cold. I want to run it again and I'm looking for air. I want to purge the system of all the water or all the air in the system. So now I'm happy that both of those aren't spitting air. I can come up here and I can simply ignite my gas on my hot water system. It says 60 and 70 degrees. I find 60 is more than enough. So if I turn that up, down here there's a little red light. In 15 seconds, if it fails to ignite, this little red light will come on. If we see that come on, we've done one of two things. We've left a cover on the hot water system, there we go, or the gas hasn't come through yet. So it said to me, I've stopped. I go back to my off setting, I go again, and we know we've just turned the gas bottles on at the front, but the chances are there'll be some air in the system. So just going off and back on again, and I reckon this time we should be right. If not, and the red light comes on one more time, we just need to purge it and just flick the switch one more time. Yep, there we go. We can see the light stayed off after 15 seconds. Give yourselves 30 minutes and you'll be able to have your first hot shower and do your dishes. Next, I'll show you the electric side of it. So we're back in the electronics cupboard and of course I've just mentioned if you need water you turn your pump on but of course if we're connected to mains pressure we don't need that switch. Now hot water there we go let's go off back to 60. Let's say we're in a park though and we want to use it on uh, electric so we turn that off we come down here I've just taken the drawer out so we can see into this nice little cutout you can see the hot water system hidden in there and you see the power point so it's as simple as reach in Turn the power on and it will now start heating water on 240. But I like to see you to get in the habit of when you're not needing 240, reaching in here, turning the 240 off because if you're one day that tank might empty out and the last thing we want it to do is to heat up like a kettle with that power turned on and of course it'll just boil the element. So um, yeah, get in the habit of only flicking on 240 when you need 240. So here we are at the stove. It's got a nice simple latch. Lift the lid, up she comes. It's got a safety switch, so we do want to make sure the lid is up. Some other safety features, the kids can come along and do all of this. I've, I'm, let's turn on every burner. No gas will flow. It requires me to hold the button in, ignite, back burner's going. Release the button, she's away. If I want to light the front one, hold the front, igniter, she's away. If you try and do it too quick, it's going to make a lot of me, it has got a nice little safety switch in there that if the flame blows out it'll cool the gas down a bit like what we've got here and no gas will flow through so a great little safety feature but turn them all off let it cool down before we shut the lid. While we're doing that, let's just have a look in the grill. And like all grills, of course your packaging will be off, but just make sure, and it has a nice little stick here, grill, a door must be open while using the grill. And that's just traditional of all grills. So keep an eye on your grill. You can watch, you've got a nice handle there to grab the tray if you need it. Otherwise, we've now let that cool down. We've got all our dials off. Now I'm pretty comfortable. Yep, that's nice and cool. I can shut the safety lid down. It will also cut the gas off if a burner was blowing. And while we're ready to go down the road, that's not gonna fall down. So nice and simple, great little safety features built into that unit. Here we are at the fridge. And to power it up, we touch the power button in the middle. The logo appears. All of a sudden our fridge is on. We can see we're on electric temperatures on about three. Let's say I want the fridge to work a little harder. I touch the control, see it's on temp. I can select the mode or I can go to my settings, but let's change the temp, enter. I now can turn my fridge up or turn my fridge down depending on what I want it to do. Acknowledge it and we're back to the display. This time I want to say, oh, we're in the bush now. I want to change the mode. I want to go from electric to say gas. I can then go across and say operate on gas, 
I go return, I go back, and you can see I've made the fridge run on gas. If it fails to work, a little red square will appear around it. And it'll obviously tell me things like I haven't turned my gas bottle on, or see the display just goes to sleep. Don't worry about that, just touch it again. But I like to leave the display in auto mode. So if I go here to auto, select enter, it's smart now and knows I'm on 240 power and we use 240. If I turn 240 off, it'll then go, right, I know you want me to run on gas. As soon as your car starts up, it'll go across to the car. So it's a very clever little system. That's where we'll pre-sell. All right, so we've snuck into where the washing machine's hidden in the cupboard in this model. Obviously, they're going to be in different vans and different areas, but nice and simple, easy to throw a load in there, shut the lid, We've got isolator taps, so just make sure your tap's on, obviously, otherwise the water's not gonna flow through. We've got a power point there at the back of the cupboard. So simple as power on, makes lovely noises. We can set the mode, the cycle, the process. We can set the water level, depending on how large our load is, of course, in there, and simply press start. So nice and simple, easy to use, saves you putting money through the uh, coin machines at the caravan park. Okay, so here we are at the hatch of the van and it's as simple as you can open one end to catch the breeze or two ends just to let the uh, air flow through and push it up. We can then bring the fly screen across to keep the flies out or if a bit of light's coming through we can block it out as well. When I see you go down the road I like these to be open. Rather than rattling like that simply open them up you can see they're nice and secure. Make sure your hatch is down and locked, that's ready to go. So let's step over here now and have a look at the window. And if we have a look at the window, we again, we wanna make sure when we've gone down the road that all our catches are up, that's released. We simply push out, hear a click, and it will stay. I can go out to the next click, it will stay, and anywhere in between, I can use these knobs to tighten it up. Otherwise, we go past the click, in she comes, and we go click, and we just lock the window, make sure you do all the catches, ready to go down the road. Simple as that, block out lines from the bottom, fly screens from the top, just make sure, of course, you separate. There's one of our clowns going past the outside. Nice and simple though, easy to do. Rightio, we've stepped into the bathroom of the van. Nothing too exciting in the shower, nice and simple, hot and cold. Just make sure if you are in the bush, turn it off, lather up with soap, Turn it on again, otherwise you will find you chew through the water. The hatch, open it up. You've got a fan to help exhaust the air. And of course, when you go down the road, make sure it's shut. But the tricky one that a lot of people get stuck on or, or, or worry about is of course the toilet. So let's go down here, have a look. It's as simple as, let's take the manuals out of the bowl uh, first, that, uh, that will be handy. So let's say we're using the toilet I always like to open the valve, let the waste fall all the way through to the toilet. Simply um, use the toilet as you would do at home. The waste falls through. If we need to flush, we've got the flush button at the back. That'll just simply squirt water around the bowl, rinse it till it's in the bottom tank. Once you slide that valve over, it completely seals the tank from the bottom. As it fills up though, and we'll go to the outside in a minute, you'll see the water level coming up, and it's not that bad. The, the chemicals, the, um, the satchels we drop in there, uh, make it much simpler. And we've got a little gauge. You can see it's on green at the moment, but let's imagine it's come to red, and we'll go outside and show you how to empty the cartridge. Yeah, we've come to the outside. We want to unlock our toilet door, push the button, turn the handle, open her up. Now we saw on the inside, we're imagining it's now full. We've got the clip, pull it out, out comes the cartridge. You can imagine this is now roughly going to be about 20 kilos. So rather than try and carry that across to the toilet block, we've got a nice little built-in handle. Now allows us to run it across the toilet block without carrying the weight. When we get there, we can pop our handle away, open up our spout. We're going to take our cap off over the toilet block or at the dump point, push the breather button so it doesn't glug, and that will allow you for the water to flow nicely, emptying out the toilet. You can give it a bit of a rinse, don't stir it up too much because there is moving parts in there. Empty it out again, give it a rinse. We can reload the toilet now with our uh, drop-in satchels. I tend to keep them inside the van and drop them from the inside. So that tank's now ready to go. We slide it back into the van, click, and we're away.
toilet's ready to go. So as you can see, not that hard to do at all. Rightio, we're under the bed and you can see a great little spot where our handle's clipped back inside. We've got our rod from the rollout awning buried here under the bed as well. We've got our wheel brace, so if you have a flat tyre and you're looking for your wheel brace. And of course under here as well is the jack. And this is if you need to jack up the uh, side of the van to swap a wheel. We know our spare wheel's on the back of the van, so let's get that out of the way. We'll push it up the front nice and secure while we're up here we've got our breakaway brake unit these are pretty much a set and forget it's just for us to come in and check make sure it's got power um, we've got test buttons and charging points but pretty much that all happens from the car hidden under here as well as the battery again we don't need to worry about that because we saw on the display up there how it said 13.7 volts so we know we've got a full battery so as you can see there's a fair bit of space still under the bed for a bit of gear some great accessories but it just gives you a little hiding spot of all little goodies. Rightio, here we are at the front of the van. We're ready to couple up. Of course, make sure you've picked up your hoses, your power cords, TV antenna down. Again, make sure we put our protector shade away, loosen off our thumb screws, click it in, just give it a little wiggle, make sure it has latch. We don't want to lose that while going down the road. We're at the front now. We want to turn our gas bottles off. Make sure they're off. Make sure both bottles. We know we're pointing at this bottle at the moment, but of course we can always use the second bottle. We're here at the front of the van now. We've got our coupling up, we're above the ball. I'm simply winding the jockey wheel. You can see it lowering over the ball. Once it's on the ball, we want to make sure we pull the clip out, drop the clutch on, and just put our safety clip back in. This is just simply a reminder to make sure we do this process. We want to let the park brake off. So if I pull back, pull that off. Now, I'm going to drop the chains out from underneath and I like to cross the chains over. So if we do the one closest to your side, you can see, you just simply, where are we? Reaching around the blind side, up, screwing that on nice and tight. And then with the cross chains, if they ever come off, you've got a cradle or a nest for them to sit into. On this side though, I've got the breakaway brake. So I just wanna bring that one forward to connect to the car as well. I'm simply going to drop it on that shackle as we then connect the car or the, uh, the shackle up to the van. And that requirement just covers our safety chains, our breakaway brake, our latch, our park brake's now off. We're ready to plug in the cables. I like to just come across the ball so they can't drag on the road. You can see we've got a 12 pin plug with a row of big pins and small pins. If we open the door, we can see the big pins are down. So I need to roll that over open it up just line it all up just make sure it's on firm and then you've got a catch underneath in the lid make sure that catches we've got our anderson plug that will pop onto the car this is of course if you've got the anderson plug that'll give us our battery charging now the only thing we've got left to do is continue to put the weight onto the back of the car and remove the jockey wheel and of course i still like to see these completely removed from the van some people like to lift them up but as you can see the wheel will wind and before you know it it's dragging on the road for the sake of taking that completely off putting the little thumb screw back on so it won't disappear while going down the road because we don't want to lose that and it's nice and secure so there we are pop that in the back of the car and we're away there we are, we hope you liked our walkthrough video of uh, the van and all the operation. We'll be updating this video from time to time as new things come along, so keep checking back in and uh, yeah, keep an eye out on uh, more videos to come. Cheers.